Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, hang on. It's not actually a fight between these two services. If it was, Studio would totally win, but it's not. I'm making a comparison between these two services, and I'm doing it because I'm wanting to introduce SageMaker Studio. And I think the best way to do that is to look at the differences between SageMaker Studio and SageMaker Notebooks. And I think this is actually really important. If you look at the AWS documentation, actually, if you just go to the SageMaker front page on the AWS website, you'll see SageMaker Studio plastered all over the place, and they'll talk a lot about its capabilities and how it links into the SageMaker SDK and does all this cool stuff. And it absolutely does. But I think it's important to understand a little bit about how it actually works because it works differently to SageMaker Notebooks. It's actually really pretty cool. But if you don't have that kind of mental picture of how it works, I think you can get a bit tripped up with SageMaker Studio. So let's take a look at the differences between Notebooks and Studio. And the first difference that I want to call out is the difference in the way that you authenticate and log in to the service. So when we looked at SageMaker Notebooks, we created the notebook in the console, and then once it was up and running, or we restarted if it was currently shut down, we then click on a link inside of the console, and bingo, we're into our running instance with our notebook running on that server. And so we use our authentication is through the AWS console. The flip side to that is in Studio. You, you can still do it in the same way, but the preferred way and the best way really to do it is through AWS SSO, which is single sign-on. So you can actually authenticate with a different identity provider, or you can use the AWS SSO built-in identity provider, but you could authenticate with G Suite or with Azure or whatever, or Office 365, those kinds of services, Okta, for example. And then once you've logged in with that, you can go and have access to SageMaker Studio. So you can actually just have a link, a bookmark, something on a wiki page somewhere that you click on. It'll then send you to your authentication identity provider. And once you've logged in, bingo, up it comes and you've got that web internet. Interface. So if you need to onboard a whole team of people who just want to work in a notebook environment and work with data science and machine learning tools, then SageMaker Studio is a great option because they don't have to work with or worry about the rest of the AWS console. So that's the first difference, the way you authenticate and get access into the environments. Now, the second difference is probably one of the main differences. And there's kind of like two subparts to this. And that's the infrastructure that is running inside of your account that actually supports the services. So the notebook service or the studio service. Now with notebooks, we've seen this already. You actually select the instance type you want, and then you create that. It builds that server inside of your account and you access it. It's running, you access it. It's not running, then you can't access it. It's as simple as that. Anything that you have is stored on that instance. Now inside the studio world, it works very differently. And this is one of the biggest differences. When you log on to Studio, then nothing is actually running. The actual user interface that you're logged into, the Jupyter Labs interface that you see, is running on some server somewhere, but it's not something that's actually running inside of your account, and it's not, crucially, something that you're being charged for. So if you log into Studio and you do nothing, it's probably a waste of time. But if you do nothing, then you're not being charged anything. It's only when you bring up a notebook or you try and do something that requires some compute power that it will go and spin up an instance behind the scenes, plug it in, and then you start paying for that instance. And that means that that compute environment is kind of divorced away from the studio environment. And you can have multiple servers in the background, churning away, churning through data, training models, doing whatever you want, and they can all be in the background of this studio instance that you have. Now, that's good and it's bad. It's good because you've got this ultimate flexibility that you just don't have with notebooks. With notebooks, you've got your server. That's your server. You want a different server, then you need a different notebook server. With studio, you can plug in whatever you need. 
And that's the good thing. The bad thing is that you can end up with lots of servers running that you're not really using and you're going to be charged for them. So the trick there is to go into the menu at the side and look at the running instances that you have from time to time and make sure that you're turning instances off when you no longer need them. There is actually a plugin available that you can get that will actually monitor for idle instances and shut them down if it notices they're idle. It's not perfect, but it's not too bad. I'll add a link for that in the description below. So there's a huge difference between the way that a notebook server works and the way that Studio works. And that's the way that it deals with compute. Now, the other side to that, and very much related, is storage. So inside of the notebook, when you create the notebook instance, you can say how big of a drive you want. If you need more space because you've downloaded a whole ton of data and you need to process it, then you'll need to increase the size of the drive that's associated with that instance. It's something you can do, but you need to kind of shut down, change the size, spin it back up again. You can do that if you need to. On the SageMaker Studio side, it uses EFS, so the Elastic File Store, Elastic File Service, EFS. It's a network file share that is plugged into the side of Studio and is available to any of those compute resources that you spin up inside of the Studio environment. So this is, again, this is entirely different. You can have a data set inside of Studio that you can work with in one notebook running with one server instance. You can then shut that down and open up a different notebook, different server instance. You could have two server instances running at the same time, sharing that because it's that network file share with all of your data in there. So you will pay for that EFS storage, but that's relatively small cost and it can be shared across different running instances. So SageMaker Studio is like a much higher level construct with multiple compute engines you can have running in there and that centralized storage. That is something that I don't think enough people are talking about. This architecturally fundamental difference between SageMaker Notebooks and SageMaker Studio. And that's the biggest difference. Now another difference that's worth talking about are the plugins. Now I mentioned before about that plugin that you can get to monitor for the resources that aren't being used and it will shut them down hopefully. That's an example of a plugin, but SageMaker Studio has got tons of plugins that you can get readily accessed through the actual interface. Many of them are to do with Jupyter Labs, some of them are to do with Jupyter Studio, but they're all compatible. And really SageMaker Studio, what it actually is, is Jupyter Labs with plugins and extensions on there. And it's these plugins and extensions that AWS have made, which highlight and make a user interface on top of the SageMaker SDK and the SageMaker SDK functions that have been made available as new features. So these plugins, that's absolutely a major difference between Studio and SageMaker Notebooks. Now SageMaker Notebooks can run in lab mode and in lab mode you can have more extensions. But the fact is that there's a strategic play here by AWS to focus on Studio. You will notice that when new SageMaker capability, core capability comes out, they don't work to make that available inside of the AWS console. They could, but they don't. What they do is they make it available or showcase it inside of Studio. So all those SDKs are there, all the APIs are there, all the SDKs are there, all the capability is there for you to be able to use this wherever. You can run it in your own code, you can run it on SageMaker Notebooks. But what the team behind SageMaker do is they make plugins for SageMaker Studio so that you can easily work with them in that environment. A great example of this is SageMaker Pipelines. So these are pipelines for managing the flow of data into a machine learning training environment, be able to train and then be able to sort of do a quantitative uh, analysis of how well that model's done and then put it into a repository. So it's basically CICD but in the machine learning world. And SageMaker Pipelines is available as a service, you can go ahead and use that. But inside of SageMaker Studio, they've made an extension and a plugin for that.
that so that you can actually get a graphical user interface and watch the flow of the data and watch the flow of the job going through SageMaker pipelines. And this is a great example of the way that the SageMaker team is using SageMaker Studio to highlight the changes that they're making to the platform. They're not gonna be putting that kind of thing inside of the console. It's all gonna be inside of SageMaker Studio. So SageMaker Studio is really the strategic direction, for the moment anyway, of the SageMaker team working for AWS. And that is obviously a huge difference then between SageMaker Studio and SageMaker Notebooks. So there is, in a nutshell, my top list of the things which are different between the two platforms. The key ones there are the way that it deals with the underlying infrastructure and hardware, the compute environment and the storage environment. And then you've got those plugins and the plugin ecosystem and really the strategic direction of SageMaker. So yes, we're going to spend some time in the next few videos looking at SageMaker Studio, working with SageMaker Studio and starting to take a look at the SageMaker SDK because that's really where the power of SageMaker lies. I hope you found this video useful. That's something I really wanted to get covered as we start our journey into SageMaker Studio. If you did like this video, then I would appreciate you giving it a like. Subscribe to this channel as well if you wouldn't mind and consider pressing the bell icon too so that you get notified when I produce more videos. Please put a comment below this video if there's anything specifically that you want me to cover as we're talking about SageMaker, but also about anything to do with machine learning in AWS or machine learning in in general. I'll have other videos on this channel as well from time to time, all kind of around the similar kind of theme. But thank you so much for watching this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Game over.